Hey everybody, Jack Carr checking in with another edition of Negative Reviews. Now, if you're an author, I do not encourage you to spend too much time on Amazon scrolling through reviews, obsessing about the negative ones, but as humans, I think we are naturally curious. So I do go there, I do read them, and thank you to everybody who takes the time, even the people that leave the negative ones. Uh, thank you for taking the time to, to leave those reviews, especially the five stars. Uh, it means a lot to me, and any of your favorite authors would sincerely appreciate you going to Amazon and leaving them a five star. So I appreciate everybody who takes the time, energy, and effort to do that. Uh, I wanted to read this one though. Usually I pick a few funny lines from some of the negative ones, make a comment, that sort of thing. But this one I wanted to read in its entirety. And it's not a verified purchase, uh, but the bold heading says this, racism and bigotry at its finest. It is a silly book and poorly written. I'll discuss this further towards the end of the review. The author's open disdain of the United States Hispanic community is beyond appalling. So the first half of this book, even more, has a character of Hispanic descent uh, who is based on a friend of mine, Marco Del Toro, uh, who's also awesome at jujitsu, just like Marco Del Toro in the book. But the first half or more, that is a lot of people's favorite character. So it's interesting that whoever this person is uh, just decided to gloss over that part. I encourage all Hispanic Americans, especially those of Cuban descent, to read from page 340 onward. Thank you for recommending people read the book. Uh, and interestingly enough, you might actually want to pick up True Believer, Savage Son, and the upcoming The Devil's Hand, because there is a character of Cuban descent uh, who is awesome, whose father was a Bay of Pigs, uh, attached to the CIA, of course, and his son is a former Special Forces officer from uh, from uh, the 7th Group and is now at the CIA uh, running Ground Ranch and wants to make sure that what happened to his father at Bay of Pigs never happens again. Awesome character. So pick up the next three books. Here we go. The author makes a couple of disparaging remarks about Haitians and compares their Miami neighborhood to Port-au-Prince and discusses how all the homes require bars on their windows. Not a direct quote from the novel, but in quotes here. But he directs most of his bigoted vitriol at Miami's Cuban community. Hmm, interesting. So I was in Port-au-Prince in 2004. I went with and went in with Charlie Third of the Seventh when uh, Special Forces when uh, Aristide was deposed. So spent a little little time there, then incorporated some of that into the novel. Here's the here it is though. Jack Carr is a racist, period. Interesting. So when this person uses that term, he does a disservice to those who fought actual racism and a disservice to those who from the inception of this country up until today gave him the options and opportunities that he has, the freedoms that he has to express himself in this country, pursue his dreams. Um, and he's chosen to use that term, to diffuse that term and turn it into a word that means someone I disagree with or someone I don't like, uh, which is shameful and heartbreaking. Moving on. He states that Miami is a third world city, discusses how drug shootouts are a common occurrence in Miami, and even includes a scene where a 300 pound obese Cuban American covered in tattoos who is unable to speak coherent English threatens Mr. Carr. And all of those are in quotes, and of course, Mr. Carr is not a character in the novel. Uh, Mr. Reese is a character in the novel, yet this person put this in quotes. In fact, everything he has in quotes here do not come, are not quotes from the book, but once again, lying is protected speech in this country. And people have given the ultimate sacrifice uh, from the inception of this country all the way through today to ensure that uh, people can take things from novels and uh, put them in quotes where they don't exist. So um, that's protected speech. So that's just how it goes. The actual passage reads this, and it says, the force of Reese's blow broke the jaw and destroyed what was probably a bad set of teeth anyway, but more important, it caused the man's brain to hit the back of his skull and bounce back inside his head, sending a shock wave through his nervous system and knocking him immediately unconscious. The man's knees buckled and gravity sent all 380 pounds directly downward. So he did get the 380 pound part right, so thanks for that. 
uh, the main character in the book then pummels this Cuban and after destroying the Cuban's teeth, notices that they are prettier post the destruction than prior. Also in quotes, not a quote from the book. He repeatedly cites Miami Vice, even though the TV show ended its run close to 40 years ago. Uh, repeatedly, I think once, but that's okay. Moreover, the state of Florida passed a law during the early 90s that nullified any bank's banking charter if they were caught laundering money. Nothing about that in the book. This essentially halted large-scale drug sales in Southern Florida because 90% of the banks solely operate within the state. Dayland has been top five in sales per square foot for close to 40 years, but according to Mr. Carr, it routinely hosts shootouts. Also not in the book, and maybe this guy's in, in real estate. Uh, the Dayland Massacre, you should check that out, 1979. I do reference that in the novel. 1979. Mr. Carr believes that speaking a foreign language is a mortal sin. I speak three languages fluently and am proud of it. Well, Mr. Carr nor Mr. Reese in the novel thinks that, uh, nor has Mr. Carr nor Mr. Reese ever said anything, written anything, or thought anything along those lines. So um, thanks for attributing that to me in this review, buddy. Let's see. I encourage everyone to read the portion of the book that concerns Miami. Once again, thank you for encouraging people to get the book. It reflects the views of a provincial and bigoted individual who openly abhors any form of multi multicultural expression. Mr. Carr's derision towards Hispanic Americans is frightening, but unfortunately it is a sign of our times. A minute portion of Cuban American taxes funded Mr. Carr's multi-million dollar training, which is ironic because if it was up to him, he would undoubtedly exterminate them all. So, no, but uh, yeah, that's just a, anyway, interesting review. And the sign of our times really is that uh, you have platforms to reach out and try to tear people down uh, from your mom's basement eating Cheetos. So that's just kind of how things are these days. And I rarely, actually, I never have clicked on someone's profile, but I did in this case because I was very curious um, about the psychology behind people that leave such negative and mean uh, reviews that take the time, energy, and effort to do that. So I clicked on it and he has 11 reviews. Uh, nine of them are one star. Only one is a verified purchase. Uh, one is a two star. And uh, all the people, he says really mean things about all of them, of course, but, uh, and they're all fantastic, incredible, and successful authors. Um, and he does give one five star. So uh, for love in the time of cholera. Uh, the author, of course, won the Nobel Prize for Literature, so uh, good job with that, with that five star. Um, so anyway, I don't think that people will be on their deathbed and have their last words be, I wish I'd just given one more negative review to someone on Amazon. I mean, I might be wrong about that, but I can only imagine um, how much more productive someone would be if they took that time, energy, and effort that they took towards being mean and applied it towards something that was, was positive, uh, towards building instead of tearing down. And that's why I wear the shirt today. Peace through kindness from my friends at Bison Union. So remember that precision in language reflects precision in thought. So when you're out there, be precise. And thank you again to everybody that jumps on and leaves reviews, even even the bad ones, those are okay too. Uh, thank you for taking the time to, to read and leave those reviews on Amazon. It makes a big difference. And once again, any of your favorite authors would, uh, would appreciate you taking the time to do that. So, uh, and if you wanna counter the ones like this, even better. So take care out there. Be safe, stay strong, keep fighting.